Hello there once again, it's me again. And just a minute. I just made a coffee. I know that's not exciting news for you, but uh, it explains the um, slurping noise and the wait a minute. Uh, uh, now, according to the title of this video, back to uh, the original, um, <laughs> I don't know if it's an origin of sorts, but uh, I had uh, promised to um, provide some sort of an answer or a clue to someone about this idea of uh, aggregation, okay, uh, and co specifically to do with Kant. And um, so my, my plan was to do something in C++ that was uh, analogous and then uh, see how that is implemented in the COM world. Now if you recall, uh, I, uh, I was thinking of uh, taking my HTTP client, uh, which is in this header file. This is what the thing I'm going to look at. In fact, let me just get rid of that and start from scratch. Gone from the world of no math. All these the examples use math, and what I realized was that uh, RPC is, is not a good example to use for aggregation, or even for a com object. You wouldn't have a component called RPC, right? And the reason, uh, I guess, is a, is slightly subtle, a subtle one. Uh, that would be because RPC, right, is a thing that allows uh, you, uh, the programmer, to specify that a particular style of procedure be uh, executed either uh, on another machine or in the address space of uh, another program, or whatever, right? So there's no interface to RPC, right? RPC helps you define an interface and a, a communication mechanism, uh, but it itself wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't have a, some standard interface. No, it wouldn't have a standard interface the interface is arbitrary. What all RPC is is a a, a communication a method of communication, unlike this thing, um, which is a a specific uh, protocol, right? HTTP. R R P I don't know if there's a. I guess there must be a specific protocol for RPC as well, but. Uh, I don't know what it is, and you wouldn't you you wouldn't um, make an RPC com object as far as I can tell, because RPC is actually used in the implementation of com, right? It's more of an implementation uh, behind the scenes thing than a than an object that you create and, and use. So I thought a simpler example would just to be. <laughs> Do what everybody else does and make a an I you know my math object. It's amazing, eh? but the two examples that I that I found online that, that were purportedly the, the simplest possible example of a calm or, or something to do with calm, both <laughs> had a class called math. One of them uh, in, in here, uh, maybe they're both in here. No, not here, they're in here. This com server, I oh, know, I've got them all in the same place. There's this thing, which has an, it doesn't say it in the file, but it's a, it's a math object, right? This would load up. 
uh, well, it's in my, but you can see it, it, it operates on long stars, right? That's some math stuff. And the other one, complex calculator, which I compiled and ran, unfortunately, is also uh, an example of a, of a math object. Uh, in this case, I think it um, adds numbers and, and he wants to add the, the times function. It doesn't matter what they do. Uh, the point is to, in this case, to show how to aggregate. But uh, math is a good uh, example of a type of object in the world. Uh, a thing, an, uh, an object which can perform mathematical operations, right? An example might be like Mat MATLAB, you know, that can um, <clears throat> take integrals and do calculus and all that sort of stuff, right? But we'll start with the easy things first. So, to that end, I've just been struggling. I started this video and uh, and I said, oh, well, hang on a minute. I'm just going to fix up a few things to uh, make sure that I'm prepared to, to go on. Because last uh, my last bungled attempt before that one, I was uh, caught off guard. I had forgotten a few things that I had to set up. And... Um, one of them was this standard device, which is still not set up properly. Yeah, I have to fix this. I think so. Maybe it's fixed. It didn't have... Oh, it must be fixed. Because I see that. Okay. It didn't have the four... My four... Um, possible... Um, uh, releases, or whatever you call these things. Uh, it only had debug and release. So I fixed that. And uh, some of the settings were wrong. And I changed it so that it, instead of using the DLL runtime, it uses the static one. Because that's the only uh, one that I have available to uh, use with these DLLs if you want to do anything you know fancy like a trace log or something. It's not a good thing and I'll, I'll try to fix it fix that up uh, eventually. I have an idea of uh, making a, a phony runtime library for, for these guys to link to you know for a print app and all that which uh, would be exported from um, like utest.exe would export those functions. That way they can both use the same memory, the same heap. Not that that's desirable, but I, I'd like to have it that way for at least for the beginning so that we can check for memory leaks and so on. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know if I really want this in here anymore, but it doesn't matter. I won't include it. It's quite easy to add one of these things. Here's the HTTP thing. What I've invented is a thing here called a <laughs> Ref Manager, if you can believe it or not, uh, the um, this is the analog to basically I unknown, not the interface. This is a thing that implements I unknown, add ref and release ref. There's no query interface. There might be something like that later, but right now there's just two functions that this thing supports, implements, I mean, uh, add, ref, and release, okay? Uh, so if you derive from this thing, then you don't have to implement these two. 
right? And C plus plus one deriving from things is a is a bonus. So uh, that's what this one does. Derives from that and then makes up its own functions and this here RPC. Why then? Oh, because I was going to mix these two. Okay. I should get rid of this. And this. So I'm, I'm going to do a much simpler example. <clears throat> More like the one that uh, was given by the, uh, uh, in that other project, uh, you know, math, live, and, uh, math and complex math. Uh, is that gonna, what I just did, is that going to mess things up? It shouldn't, because this is HTTP, but we're not even going to use that. But this is uh, the kind of uh, thing that I'm doing now. Is, is the way that uh, com components were used uh, and developed independently by various uh, organizations like the company I work for we, we developed a, a system similar to this and other companies did the same it's a very natural thing to do uh, to um, use this factory method of declaring a just an interface everything virtual right and have some mechanism for obtaining uh, an object uh, possibly stored in the registry, you know, so something about it in the registry. Okay, so if I want to create, if I want to create a new one of my device devices, the device is analogous to a a component. Okay, just think device equals component. I want to add a new item, not to um, any particular project, right? Because the implementation is not never goes into this device manager. All the device manager does is try to find out where the implementation is, load up the library, right? And then he's done. So I'm going to just call my interface um, I Sim simple math was it? Oh, I had a bit of a good idea for it. real math, All right? So this would be this is an object that has uh, mathematics functionality uh, that has to do with real numbers, doubles. And the, the complex math will use complex numbers. Get it? <clears throat> Hopefully there won't be whoops. Ah. Hopefully there won't be any conflicts with that. Alright. No, no, so just this one we can use as a as a template for what we should put in our thing. We need these declarations. We need to change the name. Find inter interface for real number uh, mathematics. Now, um, it's just a matter of defining our class. Now, if we want to implement um, uh, add, ref, and release, uh, then we could we could derive directly from what this derives from, and everything must derive from a TS device. Okay, that's that's the I unknown in this in this land. Okay, but. Um, I'm going to use the ref manager because that simplifies. And so, in my class, construct I real math. 
and that would uh, derive from this thing. We don't actually need the public keyword for struct, actually, and for class as well, I believe. If you don't specify public or private here, it, it just uses the, the default from here. So, uh, ref manager would actually be exposed to the outside world, just like as if it were a member. And okay, so that's done. Now we just have to make up an interface. All virtual. Now, uh, I'm not going to make it very complicated. Uh, well, let's say for a, for a real number would be a double. Okay. And I'll just add um, a few functions. Um, double. Double. Okay. And it returns the sum. Now, I, I could say const here, but uh, I don't think uh, that's advisable ever in any of these, in any of these functions. Uh, you, you could, but it's not a, it's not the best practice because these, all of these calls, no matter what they do, uh, um, are, are call for the for the implementer are are callbacks, right? And um, usually the, uh, the the object that implements this thing is going to want to you know change some things about itself when certain things happen. You know, like how many times did the add function get called? So if we make these cons then you got to go to the trouble of recasting everything all the time. <clears throat> you could just leave them as uh, non cons and, uh, you know, too bad if uh, somebody wants it to be cons, they can uh, override the non con But that happens less often. Okay, add, subtract, no, we don't really need subtract, do we? If we have add, we have subtract, but I'm going to put it in anyway, just so we have more than one function. And, um, and more, I guess, multiply. These are all binary. Uh, operations on real numbers and how about divide now I could make the same comment as I did last time right we don't need divide if we have multiply right oops did. Well, uh, Division is the inverse operation of multiplication, just like subtraction is the inverse of addition. Right? So, in fact, we don't need four functions, two would do. All right, done with that section. Now we need a new project. If I set things up correctly, actually, what configuration are we? Debug is good. So even if I screwed up, it should still work. <laughs> we take the standard device project and copy it uh, to, um, I'm going to call it um, my real math impulse. Sorry. Well, it's, it's my, my implementation of the real math interface, like this, right? We all have my in front. We can add that to our workspace. And um, since I'm, I'm going to allow these things to use common, put that as a dependency. We get that, we'll get rid of that. Now let's see. 
uh, it's set it up perfectly, right? Almost. I see. I can fix it. There's a little search replacing that goes on with that copy. Uh, and this didn't come out right. This should say uh, I real math. And uh, this as well. It should say I, my, I real math. Interface real math, right? But the search replace uh, replaced all occurrences of standard device with the name of the project name. Uh, but anyway, doesn't matter. It's it's already was set up to go. We have a function that uh, takes in a should take in a pointer to an I real math. We create one of our objects, so there's one I have to change, and return it. Okay, and there's a debug console. Now we have to implement the, those four functions. So, it's not too hard to do. We don't need the virtual keyword here. They're already virtual. Uh, we'll give these numbers names. Oh, I, I one more operation. I wanted to have a unary operation. A neg to negate something. I could also add inverse. I want to in. Neg goes with this group, and in goes this. This uh, computes the inverse of a, of a number with respect to addition, and this does that with respect to multiply. Okay. Return d1 plus d2. Done. One. One done. Now essentially, I just want this four times, and I'm going to use a trick. Whoops. There we go. That's the change that they do though. Sub does that. Mall does that. Div does that. And then two more. I'm not going to do any error checking. I'm just trying to demonstrate that the form of this, these things that we don't want to complicate uh, our lives with um, extraneous noise like error checking. You know, I could check for the by the oh, I just won't pass zero. That's all. Uh, return minus b. Right, and we turn yeah, one over d. Right? Okay, it's implemented. Now, it actually, I've tried this before, and it I, it's registered itself in the registry, but I deleted the registry key, so yeah, we should be set to go. Oh, now I have, now I have to add this new. Known thing from the universe to Dev Manager, and this is what took me forever was to get these macros working. I uh, real math. I got this wrong. Oh, that's right. Real math. That, that implements the creating function for a real math. It's actually this function, and uh, in the, this internal header file, I have one of these lines. Okay, 
Actually, that's all done now. I can use it. So in main here, if I include the interface file, uh, I will match. Right? Now I can declare one. I I will map map right star I see a pointer set that to no not no no uh, and now there's a function uh, called um, create or get object or create Devi create device, I'm going to call it. Uh, create device. It's a template function, so I can pass any, any type to it. Uh, so if PS device create device address of p math or if not that and that's a fail now at this point I can do something with that object you see how easy it is so I could do a p math and, and say um, pi and uh, uh, root 2. Those are two numbers I have defined. Uh, pi plus square root 2. Uh, equals yeah, the sum there. All right, Let's just compile this and see what happens. That seemed really easy, and in fact, it is easy, but it was really hard to get that those dumb macros to work. Because it, there's no checking with macros. You can write anything down and I, I didn't realize that you know I, I miscopied the, well, a few things. I real math. Oh yeah, the good header. That part I don't know how to do inside of a macro. I thought I found a macro that would do it, but it doesn't. You can create an alias for another name. Maybe that would do it though. If you kept creating aliases. I don't know. It's not that hard. You're not allowed to put a number sign down inside of a number sign. Just the way that the preprocessor works. But you can put uh, pragmas, which one is missing it? This one. So I didn't fix it perfectly. The include directory, and this is wrong too. Oh dear. I didn't change all of them. So I'll, I'll fix it up. Is there anything else that might be in there that mess me up? 
shouldn't be. Uh, I thought I just prepared that. Web drive library. Uh oh, multi threaded, not DLL. Debug multi threaded. I get confused with those. Uh, let's see the, the macro, the two macros. One uh, just makes this declaration. It works out with that funny string that it is, uh, so I don't have to uh, grab it out of the PLL. Hopefully it gets it. Hopefully it gets it right. I haven't actually tested it. This is the first go, uh, and it uh, makes up the function name and everything, and so I can't make a mistake like I did in my last attempt at this. But I, I you know, forgot, kept forgetting to change one thing or another. But hopefully now it should work. Uh, let me just check one. Did I? I did. I did. Let's show you how this works. So different from com, instead of passing a pointer to void in, <coughs> uh, this function, being a template function, um, only needs to be passed in an object of a, of a particular type. Okay, now that links the object. This is already query. And query interface is the fact that this compiled, right? That's, that's been done. Now, this here will bring us up into this function with um, pp interface, right? Which is no, turns out. Uh, and this here is my famous type name without using uh, RTTI. And that comes up back by real math. Uh, now, uh, the if there is a DLL, an implementation DLL, the standard place in the registry where it is maintained uh, is in this devices slash and then name of type of device. So uh, we had to create it; it didn't exist, and now since we don't have one, we have to ask the user to locate the DLL. This only happens once. And it'll probably bring me where I was not doing it. Uh, debug, right? My math. Real math. Okay. Uh, now the result uh, like that I just entered in that dialog has been placed into the registry. Uh, so that's here, devices, I real math, and here's its implementation DLL. Okay, so the next time I call that function, it, it won't ask me again. Okay, and now it's a matter of uh, it should. By the way, this has been macroed and templated uh, about. I shouldn't be able to go wrong with the identifier and everything. Here's the string that I computed uh, by... Uh, just looking at the way the other ones came out, and uh, this is what it's, it should be. It may not be, I haven't tried this. Okay, now uh, we got to load the library. Okay, that loaded to this funny address. And um, now we're going to check to see if that procedure exists. And it, it doesn't. Okay, now where did I go wrong? Let's see what it's supposed to be called. The 
Nami. Nami. This string. Can I copy that? Will it let me? Copy. Okay. I, I know it, it wasn't the repeat of the last. It's definitely shorter. Oh, okay. There's no problem with there's no problem with the um uh, it, the, the problem is with our DLL and not with this function. That's good. Good to know. I forgot that. Oh, there it is. It's in a TS device namespace. Oh! I'm not including it. I'm not including it in my macro. Let's go ahead and yes. Global. Uh, what was it supposed to be again? It should have. A, I'm missing at the end. Before the that I had an at sign ts device three. Uh, so this here should just say T S D lines like that, and that should do. And all of the other the thing that's great about macros is that although that bug existed with all of them, <laughs> now they're all fixed. If it if I did actually fix it, so uh, it won't ask me again, but uh, it will look for a different function this time, differently named. So let's try it again. Okay. Load the library. Now I went to a different address. Look at that. The string I included, the PS device. How did I close that notepad? Well, let's see. No. But so down. At TS device. If you get it once, then they're done. All of them are done. So it is, it is worthwhile, even though it's a pain to get it into that macro. Now that my add ref and release is supposed to be analogous to comms add ref and release, which is meaning that uh, you you don't uh, you're not responsible for deleting or allocating these objects you just add and you call add breath and release and uh, when the count reaches zero then um, let me put a break point in here then then it uh, it deletes itself All right. Now it's my string. It looks better. No. Uh, talk. 
Sorry about this. I, I could pause the video, but I'll, I'll try once more. Alright. Hello. They're not the same length, there's something missing. What is missing? Get? Oh, get I real now. It should be. Uh, it's the, the name of the function is supposed to be get I real now. Back to the macro. Uh, no, uh, where do I? Oh, well, I think the only place where it's actually written down is here. So I've actually changed the paradigm. But what? No, nothing looks for this, right? This function here is sort of autonomous. However, it is encoded in a string. And once I get the two synchronized, uh, that's okay, but I can still make a mistake here, right? So really, uh, I need a third macro to put in this file to avoid that error. I believe it's going to work this time. I'll have to stop after this with all my bugs. Okay. That's the right function name. Oh, God, God. Didn't find it. Well, let's copy it again. So we missed. And this. <laughs> I'm so sure that I can't get it wrong here. Uh, that's from the thing generated. This is from the output DLL. Just gotta get it once, get it right once. They are the same length. They're not. It says get real math. Oh, I didn't build it. I didn't build my DLL over there. Okay. Is that part of it? Build. Well, that would definitely explain it. It's included, but obviously the export name. I changed the export name. I put an I here, and uh, that's not the name that got exported. Clean solution. Oh, that's clean too much. I'll pause the video. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I'm going to fix this problem. I'm going to stop that. All of these things are going to be called um, get device. Okay. 
the, the real math part's encoded in the function name already. I don't need to say get math object. So, um, or create device. How about that? Oh, that's what the other thing is called. Doesn't matter. Uh, so, I'm going to change my macro. So build this deal around. Dump down. And that this is just a constant. No, it's not a constant. But it's nearly a constant. In fact, um, I think that since the arguments at the end, uh, right, if this would be just get object or create object, and so the only part that needs to change is uh, this bit here. So in fact. I don't need a bunch of identifiers. All I need is the name of the object, I real man. And the rest should be the same. This is what we're looking for. Now, why does it say get real man? What do I do here? What's wrong with this project? General out here project name. Real man feel uh oh, my real Mac here. Um, let's see. Run DLL. I'm going to delete it from the registry. Buildings. I mean, I could have changed the name of it. The name of it, DLL, too. So it's my real math. Oh yes, now the function name is this. I love control L. Uh, oh, it's not that, sorry. Let me dump it out. Create the line and the identifier, which is simply the name of the object, there. So instead of uh, what we had before this, everything's going to look like that. Uh, uh, right up to this U and then the name of the interface and nothing else should be any different. And uh, that's a global H. I want that again. There was something here. What was it? There's no space, I know that. I oh I, I separated it just, just to show okay. So it's
network bar right change my macro now I can use type name I wonder, yeah, I wonder if I can use type name I don't need a macro for this string okay that's good I just need that bit and to create, I don't need to, um, I don't need to know this. <laughs> the, the create function doesn't need to know that the name of the string. It, it knows that the compiler puts it in. Dev manager. Oh, yes. Yeah. Macro. Let's pass in. I'm returning that. So with, um, I can use TS strings again. That's fine, but just to be sure. You see how these things fall into place C++? Like, I didn't plan for this. Uh, here, uh, I don't really need a macro anymore, right? Although the, the, the get function is still not uh, automatically generated, but I don't have to give it a name. I don't have to type death with, right? It's a pointer to an interface. It's a thing. Here's the function. Then I can get rid of the macro. The function itself is a template. Bool TS Defy Create Divide Alright um, Which takes um, a uh, Divide now I, I can put interface name. Uh, now I was thinking I could just uh, uh, have a pointer to a TS device, and that should be good enough. But then I can't get the type name. Or maybe I can. No, but I need the type, not the name. I need the type itself, I think. Well, anyway, let's just do it the old-fashioned way for uh, I will math. So that's the version of the function that we're implementing, which has to take. You see, now I don't need to put this here. I don't think so. I will man star. That that tells it which one I want. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I do return do create display. Uh, but now. I do, I want, I'm going to say, I will not. 
I don't think it works though. Try. Uh, sorry, ppRJ and then this string specifier. You see? Now the question is if I put <laughs> If I put the base class in here, is it going to resolve it? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to resolve this. So let's see if it does. Where is this macro? Uh, no, what's this? Declare. This, this is declare. Okay. Right. <coughs> what I'm returning <coughs> is a get. That's the problem. I can't template it seems to template I this get I it's in caps. Get I real man function type. Uh, which is the, it's actually defined here, and that is works with this. Oh, sorry, just return this, and that thing has uh, a template parameter. Let's see. That's where I get. That's where I get stuff. I have to specify. This thing is going to pull. Get I real math. See if that works. Hello. Oh, it's a head of file. I'm put this in the CPP file. I'm sure that there must be a way to make to get these this type into here. <clears throat> I know how this this string no longer whoops not into this PPR. And I think I need to cut. Head seventeen or something. I had before. No. Oh yeah, I do have to cut something off the head. The type name includes a uh, existing declaration. Oh yeah, star star. Um, I need a subtraction function from the other side. Uh, what's my macro? Uh, define string and signs. No, um, TS and by Count this. 
string that's good and firm. And then there's two columns following that. And that should do it. Oh, that's the count, not the length. If a thing is length 2, I would like to subtract 2. I would like to cut off 2. So this should be length. Oh yeah, the kind of string. I, I thought I, I ought to make one that just does. does uh, I will right now. <clears throat> uh, fine. Uh, dev thing. Stir. No, no, I can't. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know if it'll work. Oh, it's a grass one. Might work. Whoops. I need one that just takes it. Takes a uh, single, um, you know, a single uh, argument. And use the name as the um, as the string. Might work. Sometimes. Well, it has to work because this doesn't resolve any number or anything. Not enough for divine divine. Oh, so that. Right, come on. Get I real math from the clan. Well, that's the thing I took away. No, it should be here. Declare. Oh, I didn't declare it. I do need to declare that thing. But I can work that. I think that can be worked out. I know that can be worked out. Right. I know the type. It's just a matter of me going over slowly and fixing this. And then I can just write it. Just have one function. Get I know now. Get and then enter the oh, It's true. It's a case. Case sensitive. Alright, <laughs> no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and see what happens. Alrighty then. Uh, here we are in this. I press F8. Uh, go through that slowly. We'll get there. Where we end up with. 
that looks right. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. I didn't subtract enough from this. Oh, because it says uh, it's going to be struck. Right? Now I do want to do argument thing. Uh, so I should really should pause this, but you, this is how you know this is how these things go. That's the, that's the thing that precedes the type name, uh, so I don't need to cut anything off now, I've concluded it all. Oh no, sorry, I have to cut off node 2. Now, of course, one ought to get clever, and sometimes it's a class, and sometimes it's a struct. So you could do a, like a string tope to a double colon, say, from the return value of this, and that, that would all, that would cover everything. Why didn't I do that? It's so stupid. Toke. <laughs> there we go. I don't even know. I don't even need to know what it is. Right? And in fact, the thing that comes out of here from the string tool is what I'm supposed to put. Never mind. <clears throat> you, you see how it, it, it could be all tied together, and then if I wanted to, I could even change this namespace. This is how all my all my things go. It incrementally, it, everything just reduces to almost nothing. So it's a complicated, you know, with lots of uh, manipulating strings and searching and doing things. And it ends up being like nothing. Now well, let's see. Let's just put a break for it. Uh, struct ts to the end. String token is not. I have to string token it first. Like this thing returns what was taken away from uh, that string. So that's no good. Head. Oh, no, my class, class, uh, of device. I'm going to start out with this, and then I'm going to say, um, with a new string called, um, head. And that's equal to uh, the device. Uh, take away these colons, right? And um, and then string talk no, I don't want. I do want to sync string talk, but if I string talk from the back, it will give me the right string. I made a mistake somewhere.
See, because uh, it, it's that string. It says struct space um, device colon colon ts device colon colon and then the name I want. So knocking off these colons, uh, right? String total will get rid of. I don't even need two columns, one's enough. I could put a single character. Uh, it's going it's going to get rid of all columns and return to me the here. This returns the what would be on the After, after the string total, the first call, uh, it, uh, that will be uh, TS divided. The columns will be gone. Right? Well, including the columns. Struct. Ts device oh, colon colon um, my math. That's the name of the function, right? And plus some other stuff. Oh, no more? No, no, that's it. Now, calling string took from the in the forwards direction okay removes from th this string the device string all of this stuff and returns that to the user so third device now has the correct value and the thing that's re been returned to the user is this right uh, but no colon because the columns get removed. Now uh, I would like to extract the word TS device from that. So I don't need to say white space. But I want to specify the second <laughs> this is the second argument, so I need to specify it. I could just put space. Um, and I do that in the reverse direction. Uh, right. If I do that in the forwards direction, I would be returned this word and, um, you know, the temporary that we've created would have this value. But I don't want that. I want this one. So I do it backwards and that should do it. I got a mistake somewhere. The, the syntax highlighting is not working. Okay. Now, nowhere in here does it say math except in this template parameter. Now, what have I done wrong? It's looking at math. That time. Oh, that's a long time. Incredible. Uh, two arguments expected three. Oh, plus. No. Yeah, plus. Got three, I should have said it's got the two. Yeah, okay. Right, I'll put these in brackets. Um, now, is it enough? Spirit device is a string already. So I can leave this as a literal. 
over large interest. No, no. That function does not take the character string, I hope. LP on Uh I'll I'll change it. I want to turn it into um uh multi byte. Oh, I'll change the other function. It turns out that it's going to be multi byte in this build. Right, but in, in, in general, if I switch to unit code, and I say, uh, because this thing uh, takes this a regular string, and that uh, that should not be it. <clears throat> That's wrong, right? I mean, it's not wrong. It's not wrong that it asks for one of those strings, but there's no reason why it should. The last of that was four. I don't need this, but surrounding bracket. I don't have a surrounding bracket. Are too many brackets? Do the percent s here, which has to be a real string. Yeah, all I got to do is that ch change the conversion of somewhere else. Put it somewhere else. Put it in. Here. This is the guy with the problem, right? He's got to deal with the fact that type name uh, won't accept it. No, no, it's, that's not true. The create ID. ID. It does it called load library. Should be fine. I'll make my you know I'll make my own load library function that takes this, you know like load library A and load library W. I probably use such a thing. All right. Create device, blah blah blah, I real math, yes, see how it all it all work itself out. And it should actually work. <laughs> Believe it or not. Well, I gotta select it. This has been a long video and I'm probably gonna cut off about half of it. Library load, funny, funny location, and we got it! We got a function! Return, return, and it worked. Now, as far as main is concerned, all that's happened is this. And uh, if we uh, run, here we are in real math yellow, running the appropriate function. You see? And there's nothing to it. I got for the format specifier there. And I got the, I don't want that. But, uh, Th that fix up all those th that fixing up that I just did that's a one off it'll never have to be done again
right? You just declare the type that you want, call the create device uh, function, and uh, it will automatically uh, locate the correct DLL that brings back the correct type from the correct key in the registry. All that happens seamlessly, and you get your object, which can do the arbitrary thing that you've uh, de declared in your interface definition that it should do. And that's the essence of COM. Now, what I want to do is extend this class next time to include, um, I'm going to make a complex math, but instead of adding, uh, you know, he, he added times to plus. My idea is going to go. No. Instead of um, uh, adding times, what I'd like to do is to have it work with uh, complex numbers. So that means I'll have to invent a complex number class, you know, uh, and that should be pretty easy. A plus B I, you know, uh, the, the, the complex numbers obey simple rules, and um, then we can do complex math or real math or both, and we should be able to extract a real math interface on its own out of the containing class, the unc outer. Well. I don't know if it's the unc outer, but or how I'll implement it. I might have two inner classes and one surrounding class, or the surrounding class might be the complex math class, and it might have one inner class. Depends on uh, you know whatever. However, I, however I decide to uh, take that step. All right. See you.